Keepers of the flame, on this, my ascension day, I call to you to be myself, to invoke my mantle, to be the manifestation of Saint Germain where you are. Therefore, leap to your feet and claim my mantle, the mantle of my ascension. Thus my angels, the angels who attended my ascension, place upon you that garment, my seamless garment. You may wear it in joy to fulfill your mission until the hour of your victory. Do not allow it to dis diminish, beloved hearts, by discord of any kind in your worlds. For I tell you, this is a very real and tangible manifestation of myself that I place on every keeper of the flame throughout the earth. So know, beloved, that this is truly a momentous occasion for beloved Portia and me. Now then, be seated, beloved. I come in this hour grateful that you and the messenger give me opportunity to speak to you, for you observe many concerns that come to the very cup of your hearts. And I say that cup of the heart is full. It is full of sorrows of the Blessed Mother and full of joy of the Christ in you as you receive him. Blessed hearts, I continue with the theme of the Easter Conference dictations. Know then that my mantle is of the royal purple. That mantle is a fiery defense for you. And as you feed the mantle with violet flame, 
and set the course of your own natal day when you shall have won your ascension. I say, beloved, things should become easier for you, and this is my desire. It is my desire, first and foremost, to assist you with that mantle, to help you sustain equilibrium within your heart chakra, within the threefold flame, and to remember to practice the precepts of alchemy that I have taught you. Blessed ones, you may create for yourselves, under the guidance of the messenger, an abbreviated form of the ritual of the creation of the cloud, whereby with a few fiats each day, you may reaffirm and visualize that cloud, not a cloud of unknowing, but a cloud of knowing that when the cloud is around you, you have a suitable vessel for the descent of your I am presence upon you. Fear not the intensity of the white fire of the I am presence, Fear not to be individuals. Fear not to be stern with human nonsense. Fear not to be joyous and to rejoice in the freedom flame which is released through this very music. Blessed ones, I want you to be as I am and as I was. For on my ascension day, when I entered in to the great God reality of my true being, it was but a step from where I had been in embodiment. This you can read in the Akashic records, and it is true, beloved, for I maintained a level of consciousness in the flesh in this world until that hour, and yet I was fully draped with ascension's flame. The greatest weakness in this community, if I may state it, beloved, for your own good, is to allow yourself to drop beneath the level of the Christ consciousness of the heart. For when you do this, you separate yourself from the entire spirit of the great white brotherhood. Therefore, first things first, be able to diagnose yourself through the Dr. Gautama Buddha, through your own Christ self, to take note when there is that subtle descent and you are no longer in the full glory and joy of your Christ self. This does not mean that you are in a state of gaiety or overflowing with happiness to the point of not being on guard. You can have the full awareness of the Christ, beloved, and be balanced, but take heed, all of you. There does lurk in everyone who is yet of the unascended consciousness those snares and traps of the soul herself, and then those snares and traps that become traps for those who may associate with others. Therefore, beware. People count it their right and a matter of integrity to trust one another. Be certain that you are trusting the God within. For if you are relating to the outer person, then you will have many ups and downs in relationships. But if you relate to the great God reality of your own being and stand firm in that God reality, you will connect with the God reality of another and raise up a brother or a sister. You may raise and comfort the mighty as well as the lowly. You may be the embodiment of the comforter. And this I bring to you, beloved, as you approach the celebration of Pentecost this month. O oh, beloved hearts, to be one with the Maha Chohan, this is a great calling indeed. Thus I ask you to determine all factors in your life and what are those repetitive manifestations, repetitive ad nauseum for you and for me that keep coming up again and again. Analyze them, deal with them, be done with them, see them for what they are. Know your greatest weakness and overcome it by your greatest strength and press on. Do not fail your tests, beloved. Some fail those tests in pride, in anger, unwittingly. How can anyone be unwitting? You must be full of the wit of Saint Germain. You must be full of the mockery of the human consciousness. 
even the human consciousness of yourself. You must make light of it, but be stern enough to cast it out and be done with it. It is monotonous, it is boring, it is burdensome to you and me to engage in the repetitive downfalls of that human vibration, where when we are just about to speak to you along the pathway of life, you suddenly find an absenteeism whereby you are not in the center of your God consciousness, we cannot continue our communication with you at inner levels, and we must wait until you realize that you have stepped out of the mantle of your Christ self and have descended again into that human level. Bring yourself up, beloved. You never know, you never know when you have the opportunity in communion with the nature, in being in the great outdoors, in being in the wind and the sun and acknowledging the Holy Spirit everywhere. You never know, beloved ones, when we shall impart to you profound insight. What closes us off from greater communication with many of you is constant chatter, constant preoccupation of thought and feeling with human concerns. We can only enter in and advise you, warn you, alert you, remind you, if that soul of yours, that mind of yours, is one at the level of your Christ self. Draw nigh to your Christ self, and your Christ self will draw nigh to you. When you walk in that mantle, you walk with any ascended master or cosmic being to whom you may call. Therefore, do not be confused and do not fool yourself that you have that consciousness when in reality you do not. This takes careful watchfulness. Thus you see my continuation of the Easter conference is on the points of the law that will bring you to a certain self-mastery. And that self-mastery, beloved, when you have it is the sign that we may appeal to the lords of karma, to solar logoi, to take you on as chilas with a capital C. The capital C of chila stands for the capital C of Christhood. Enter into it, strengthen it, meditate upon it, beloved. And you will see surely how the levels of mastery will increase. Therefore, beloved, I have come to you because I believe in you, in the God within you. I ask you to believe in yourselves, to believe in your mighty I am presence, and to look at the burdens of the world, the burdens of the youth and people of all ages, as you have seen a slice of the slavery that people place themselves in when they are addicted to drugs of all kinds. There are false hierarchies and entities and discarnates that are absolutely vicious, and the black magicians have created these substances in their laboratories, spawned them upon the youth and people of all ages, and you see how they have prepared substance that affects the central nervous system, the mind, the entire life, until individuals become a slave of the false hierarchy. Not one, but many have said that they love and hate heroin. This is a love-hate relationship with their own dweller on the threshold and with the entire false hierarchy of heroin of the planet. Therefore, understand how the black magicians created the poppies to bring forth that impelling vibration to partake, to partake, to partake. There are suicides and deaths in this earth that never should have happened. There are abortions of light bearers that never should have happened. Pray then that you understand that only you can fulfill your reason for being or abort it. Take heed, beloved, for there are many temptations and subtle pitfalls, and they originate in the carnal mind. Therefore, repeat again and again as you speak to your four lower bodies and to your body elemental, you have the mind of God. 
This you must remind yourself of daily. You have the mind of God. You must say to yourself, I have the mind of God. Mothers with children in the womb must speak to their babes and say, you have the mind of God. And what is the implication of this statement? The implication is that you have all of the mind of God and that you have limitless opportunity into infinity to have the mind of God, to solve every problem, to become your Christed being, to outwit the greatest minds of the false hierarchy, which are not so great to begin with, else they would not be in the false hierarchy. The fallen ones anywhere and everywhere, but you have been taught to believe you are limited. You have limited IQs. You have a limited place of consciousness. You are human. You think through the brain when in fact you think through the mind of God. The mind of God is all encompassing. Visualize yourself now having extended from your auras an intense fiery yellow flame that comes from the mind of God and the crown chakra. See that aura intensifying and expanding now. See it one inch, three inch, five inches. See it a foot out from your form. See that halo not only upon your head, but throughout your body for the mind of God inhabits every cell, every physical cell, every cell of the desire body, the mental body, and the etheric body. You not only have the mind of God, you are the mind of God in manifestation. And that is it. That is the solution to the entire conundrum of mortality and the limitations of mortality. You were originally made in that image and likeness of Adam Kadmon, and you did not partake of full immortality through the descent of that, and therefore you have become heirs to mortality. And yet I tell you, you are God-free beings. You have ventured forth with great courage to enter these octaves. You have dived as though driven by divers for pearls at the bottom of the sea, the pearls that represent the souls of lost brothers and sisters. You have come fearlessly, and I tell you, you have been fearless for many lifetimes. It takes tremendous courage indeed, beloved, to enter this octave with a determination, knowing full well the density that hits the five senses when you arrive and you are first born. Precious ones, to affirm your Im immortality now is your reason for being, to cast out mortality in every phase and dimension of consciousness. I have brought with me students from my retreat. I have brought them from the cave of symbols so that they might observe the release of this dictation and your receptivity to it. Beloved ones, there are many, many souls of light on the etheric octave and even in lower octaves who find when they pass from the screen of life that this communication is the open door to higher octaves, which is why we have kept this open door through this messenger. And the messenger of your own Christ self, when you attune properly, is your open door to your mighty I Am Presence. Thus the opening of the door to those who live in the plains of earth is a mighty dispensation indeed, beloved. And as you rise in that cosmic peerage, you find that day by day you are experiencing immortality. Simply compare yourselves, beloved, to others in the earth who have such density by the foods they partake of, by the information they ingest, by the low vibrations they allow themselves to continually play on their TV sets. Whether it is the soap operas or all manner of violence, this Bombarding the psyche, beloved, is very dangerous. You have determined not to do this, and therefore there is light, light, light blossoming in your cells. And the more you purify and the more you arise, the longer you will have in this lifespan. For I can increase longevity when you take care of the physical body, since it is the vessel, beloved hearts. Yes, it does matter what you eat, and you are what you eat, and you are what you imbibe through the eyes, through the five senses, through the subconscious. Thus, beloved ones, to trifle with this and in disbelief or denial to say, I can do this or that with impunity. This is false, beloved. You can do nothing with impunity that violates the physical body. For when the, the physical body is violated, the lifespan is shortened. You, you alone are in control 
of your age and the limitations of age. You are in control of how much you will expand the mind, how much you will think of yourself as old or young, how much you draw up the light of the sacred fire of the Kundalini, and how much you follow the diet of the Eastern adepts and see to it that you do not have addictions for food, but you are the master of that which you take in. And that which you take in is what you need to serve. And what you need to serve is far less than what you need to indulge in the many dishes that are not fit for consumption upon this planet. So you see, beloved ones, you can get beyond the place of being addicted to food. And you can take in food advisedly, or you can fast. And you can determine that either way, you are not addicted, but you are taking the necessary calories and substances to sustain a physical body that is absolutely vital to your ascension, beloved. I want you to know that keepers of the flame are ascending. And I announce to you this day the ascension of the beloved keeper of the flame, Alice Boscow. Beloved ones, this is a great victory for this soul and this precious heart who has gone forth to spread the teachings of the ascended masters. And I have brought her with me this day that you might bow before the light within her and so note the humility of this soul. Therefore, I present to you the ascended lady master, Alice. Speaking to one of our ministers before her passing, within hours before her passing, she said, when I first saw Mark Prophet in San Francisco, I fell in love with him. Blessed hearts, this one then followed the path and the teaching of her guru all the way to her victory. None of you knows how much karma you have balanced. None of you knows how much more you must accomplish in order to make that ascension. And therefore, there is no other choice but to serve and still serve, to keep on keeping on, to continue to break the bread of life. Yes, break the bread of life. As Mark Prophet broke that bread of life, as Elizabeth Prophet is breaking that bread of life, you now see, beloved ones, how the breaking of the whole loaf in communion, the apportioning of crumb by crumb and piece by piece is the giving of the leaven of the Christ consciousness to those whom you meet until that leaven shall leaven the whole loaf of their consciousness. Do not be chary with your teaching and your words, beloved. Do not withhold pointing out to another the error of his ways. Do not fear the response. Only fear that you withhold the truth and therefore make karma. Yes, beloved ones, some have come with very little karma to balance in this life. Some have come with great karma. But beloved ones, God is the all in all, and the ascension flame and the violet flame is able. And therefore, what determines how much karma you balance in this life and whether you will make your ascension? Well, I will tell you this on my ascension day today. It is how much love you inject into what you are doing. That love is the great multiplier. It is the great multiplier, beloved. To give and give in a stingy way affords not much gain in the balancing of karma, but to give all that one has and to enter into a path of walking as the pilgrims, as the saints, as the devotees, as the sannyasins, beloved, giving what you have to another, giving that love and developing that heart chakra and expanding and expanding and expanding that heart 
until your heart is like a fountain, a giant fountain, and many, many birds come to wash in that fountain, to sing in that fountain, to chirp and be happy. Yes, beloved ones, it is as easy to give love to millions as it is to withhold it and give it only to one in a very personal and human relationship. Beloved ones, your relationships with one another should be as chalices that you uphold together in your marriages, in your path, in your groups, in the areas of your service. You can intensify and multiply that fire of the heart of Maitreya, that fire of the heart of Manjushri. You can multiply it until when you give a gift to one, the whole world is blessed. Thus, though you come carrying on your back a heavy, heavy burden of karma, I tell you, I have promised you before and I promise you again, you can make your ascension in this life. You can make it, beloved, with the one qualification that if perhaps there is some karma, some ki final karma you must balance, that you would rather balance before you are ascended, you may be required to take a final incarnation. Apropos this, beloved, I tell you that when these teachings are blocked by the media, by the putting down of this movement, by the mockery of it, and all that is gone before in the press, I tell you, it means that many, many souls miss finding this path in time when they could have made their ascension in this life had they not been blocked. Therefore, I say, shout it from the housetops, send it forth, send forth your publications, and realize that wherever you are, you are the mouthpiece of Lord Maitreya, Lord Manjushri, of the great compassionate one, the one whose flame of kindness has brought you, and of the great mind of Manjushri. Oh, yes, beloved, the mind and the heart moving together. Rejoice that you are able to give. Give of yourselves more. Heal your bodies and give more to life. Be insistent when you know one who has a terminal disease is so caught up in that disease that they can no longer even see what is the solution to the problem and therefore take devious routes which cost them their lives. Blessed hearts, it is an hour for healing. And I, St. Germain, wish to tell you that I have come yesterday with the Lord Maha Chohan, for we shall not wait till Pentecost and we shall not wait till the July conference to activate once again the mantle of healing that our messenger has worn for many, many thousands of years. Blessed ones, you should fear not to seek and find healing from God and to be willing to balance the karma if necessary that you are required to balance and before that healing is filled. Blessed hearts, it is truly upon us in this hour to recognize the full power of healing that is available. Some of you have been with Jesus, some with Gautama, some with Padma Sambhava and other adepts around the world in all ages. I tell you, beloved, whether to a greater or a lesser extent, the power of healing is always channeled through the Holy Spirit. And therefore, get right with the Holy Spirit, beloved, for in that spirit you will find the fullness of all things that does give liberation to you and not make you believe that you are dependent upon this and that and the next drug for your healing. Mindful of the Holy Spirit's presence then, remember, both messengers served with Jesus. Therefore understand that, beloved, and know that in the presence of Jesus in Bethany, so there was transmitted to certain disciples, one of whom is your messenger, the mantle of healing from the Lord. Yet, beloved, we have recommended her not exercising this, for the dispensation is unto you of a higher calling, and that higher calling is to pursue healing through the violet flame, through transmutation of karma, through holding the reins of the misuse of your energies, the misqualification of the sacred fire in all of your chakras, and the out-of-alignment state whereby unwittingly you become entertainers of Martian energies. Thus, beloved hearts, Know then that the law does require the balancing of karma, but healing can come about so that you may rise up as with wings of healing, healing in your wings, and therefore come to the place 
where you are free to balance that karma as well as to enjoy that good health which you have accepted because you have accepted the instrument of the Holy Spirit, the instrument being our messenger. I ask you then, as the messenger has asked you, and in some cases pleaded with you, to take on the giving of the healing decrees following the Jesus Watch and the Mother Mary Rosary on Wednesday night services. Blessed ones, when you leave at the end of the Jesus Watch, you are leaving the best part behind, for you see the Jesus Watch is the manifestation, the platform you build where Jesus enters the room, places his electronic presence over each of you. Then Mother Mary does come with Saint Germain and Archangel Michael. Then, beloved, you pursue those healing decrees right through the sacred heart of Jesus, right through the immaculate heart of Mary, right through my heart as well. Understand then that the platform for healing on Wednesday night is to give the remainder of the decrees, the decrees in the green section, whereby you may call forth that tremendous healing power. It is not necessary to decree all night, but there is a great momentum of healing to be gained from those fifth ray decrees. Let us go after it, beloved. Aren't you interested in seeing what you can prove, what alchemy of healing you can bring about? not neglecting what the lords of karma and I have given together with Jesus in the healing arts and even in the medical profession which many of you shun to bring about healing. Therefore, beloved, I am grateful that you do not count yourselves among those who are fanatics in other religions where they refuse all medication and all medical assistance and therefore find themselves praying for healing but receiving it not for they have not been willing to bend the knee to face science and know that that science is also of God and that there are many things that can heal them which they should avail themselves of. Thus the middle way, beloved. The middle way it is. And thus when we receive Lord Gautama Buddha this day, we are realigned with his heart that is in the middle way, neither to the right, neither to the left, but God-centered. God-centered, beloved. That is my message to you. Be God-centered, be not moved. And watch how the initiations come, that you are able to face every trial. You are able to go into the very depths of your being to find God and to know that God will never, never, never let you down as long as you do not let down your guard and descend below the level of the Christ consciousness. I am Saint Germain. I have many gifts of alchemy to give you and many things to teach you. Beloved ones, hurry up. Hurry up, I say. Move now. If you were my steeds, my great steeds of light, and I were driving a mighty chariot across the heavens, I would speak to you in love. I would command you. I would use my whip and keep you in stride and keep you together. This you must do for yourselves now. Be self-motivated. Be my steeds of light. There is yet so much we can do for America and for the nations. Oh, beloved, I am the friend. I am the friend of freedom. I am the friend of your free hearts, your free souls, and your free minds. And I desire you. I compel you to realize who and what you are. You are the mind of God. So be God-centered and do not falter and fall again, beloved. It is not worth it. And you set yourself back too many months and years when you do. Therefore, I say, arise, shine in the glory of your God. I am Saint Germain. I am ascended and I pull you up, but you must climb. You must climb the tree of life. You must go through the initiations of the ten spherot, like it or not. For when you shall ascend, beloved, you shall ascend from Maitreya's mystery school, not from the churches and the simple teachings given to the babes in arms who yet only take of the milk of the word. I have given you the meat of the word, beloved, 
Therefore, there is a price to be paid for full healing of the body, even the bearing of your own karma, even the healing of your own psychology. For you must truly be masters before you become ascended masters. Do not mistake someone who has that mastery for someone who does not. For those who have it, never tell it and do not show it. I smile, beloved, and many masters who are your friends smile with me. I ask you to smile and rise above the doldrums of complaints and burdens and know that when you are in that state, unfortunately, you have no tie to me or to your own Christhood. Take care of this today, beloved. Take care of it, for the dark cycles are indeed getting darker, and you need to rise. I am Saint Germain. I flood the earth with freedom's flame. I flood your souls, washing them clean with ascension's fires. Whatever it takes, beloved, be willing to do it for your victory. Whatever it takes, I tell you, be willing. Do not miss the opportunity to love.